When did my mother first describe gay sex to me? Good question. I was eight years old. I was eight years old. She brought me into the dining room. She sat right across the table from me. She said, do you know how your father and I love each other? I said, of course. You and dad love each other more than two people in the world could possibly love each other. She said, well, two men can love each other in the exact same way that your father and I love each other. She said, what happens when two men love each other like that? <laughs> what they do is they, uh, they take off all their clothes, um, they get into bed, and they shit on the Bible! <laughs> so I don't talk to her anymore. <laughs> From Boston, if you guys didn't know. Uh, yes, a place. Um, <laughs> they talk different in Boston, you know, like, instead of car, they say ka, instead of Harvard, they say Harvard, instead of boat, they say faggot. Uh, it's called I Fuck Sluts. It's not a roll call, but thank you. Sluts! 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 Sluts, I fuck sluts. Sluts get fucked when I fuck sluts. No if ands and or buts. I fuck sluts, I fuck sluts. Nice girls are nice, but no good for nut sucking. They'll need a serene night to green light a butt fucking. But that'd be easy with sleazy old slut fucking boo to the nice girls. Praise be to slut fucking. I have a list. A list, yes, a list of all the sluts I've missed. I've never fucked or sucked these sluts, and thus my nuts are fucking pissed. So when I fuck the lucky slut, my nut removes her from the list. Another dumb cum bucket struck from my nut sucking, suck it, slut, slut fucking bucket list. <laughs> yes, you hear the influences Chaucer, Keats. Um, pages are blank, I know it. Why am I lying to you? Sluts can be white, black, brown, pink, or almond. They can be skinny with big tits or be skinny with small ones. Sluts can be perky, preppy, or posh with their brains and their clothes all shrunk from the wash. Excuse me? <laughs> but other sluts are pretty and funny and smart. These sluts can lift all your thoughts from your dick to your heart. They can talk about science, music, or art. They can put you together. Or they can pull you apart, but don't trust these sluts, don't. Don't you dare, the force you trust them and love them and care, and then they'll be gone and then you'll be aware of that hole in your heart that that dumb slut left there. Thank you very much. So, he was lashing out. I'm a little bit vulgar, but, uh, you know, dicks and vaginas to me are sort of like Coke and Pepsi, you know? Uh, I strongly prefer one, but my dad thinks they taste the same. <laughs> Just stop believing me in the uh, like tooth fairy and shit. Like what, 12 at best? 12? I have a cousin. 18. Okay? It's, yeah, still believes in gay marriage. <laughs> and we're on our way. I moved to um, Hollywood recently from Boston, where I grew up, and places. And I, I, I heard about these sort of wild Hollywood party nights that people would have, and I didn't think they were true until I moved to Hollywood and I started having them. Anyway, this is a, uh, this is a song about a crazy night that happened a couple weeks ago. It's called, What Did I Do Last Night? Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 what did I do last night? myself to sleep.
It was a good one. I got a really good joke about video editors. Video editors are so fucking... Uh, I think we should do a poem right now, if that's okay. This poem is a little bit sappy, a little bit romantic, so we'll get it out of the way now. Ready for the second half, I think we need to take a little bit of a break from the jokes, break from the comedy, sort of meditate a little, and then that'll get us all geared up for the second half. So I've written some haikus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Haikus are Japanese poems. Japanese poems consisting of... Seventeen syllables, three lines, five, seven, five, and I find them to be very uh, philosophical just in like the way they're constructed, you know, there's a certain uh, soundness and simplicity, a clearness and cogency, if you will. So if you just indulge me for a little while, I'd like to read these haikus. Um, thank you. I saw a rainbow on the day my grandma died. Fucking lesbian. <laughs> For 15 cents a day, you can feed an African. They eat pennies. Old people's skin sags because it is being pulled towards the underworld. <laughs> One fish, two fish. Red fish, blue fish. I think Dr. Seuss was autistic. <laughs> A kid insulted my mother, so I said, Your mama is so black. <laughs> do unto others as you would have them do to you, said the rapist. <laughs> My aunt used to say, slow and steady wins the race. She died in a fire. <laughs> Even if he is your friend, never ever call an Asian person <laughs> And finally, Bono, if you want to help poor people, sell your tinted shades, you cunt. <laughs> Time for a story. Let's do a story. It's time for a story. It's time for a story. A very special story, especially for you. It's time for a story. It's time for a story. Sit down and listen now. Don't be a Jew. This story is called Andy. That's a glitch. You can be Jewish. This story. This story is called Andy the Frog, featuring long and convoluted similes. And I'll warn you when uh, one of those long, convoluted similes rears its old uh, head. So here we go. Once upon a time, there was a frog named Andy. Ooh. Andy lived at the Patton Park Pond and had never hopped anywhere else in his entire frog life. He had three best friends. Millie, who never left her lily pad. <laughs> Billy, who was always hopping mad. <laughs> and Roger, who was arrested for possession of tadpole porn. So one day, one day, Andy saw something hop across the grass on the other side of the pond. Millie, Billy, Roger looks at Andy. Across the pond stood the most beautiful frog Andy had ever seen. She's gorgeous, said Millie. She's beautiful, said Billy. <laughs> Bit old for my taste, said Roger, classic Roger. <laughs> and then she was gone. I need to go find her, said Andy. I need to follow my little frog heart. So Andy followed the beautiful frog's footsteps into the forest. He then came across a turtle. You can't pass, said the turtle. Please, said Andy. No, said the turtle. And uh, this is the first long convoluted simile. Then there was a rustling in the bushes and like a man who had been shot in the chest with a rifle, the turtle was shot in the chest with a rifle. Andy kept moving, but at this point, like the doctor of the Kenyan track team, his patience ran thin. Andy kept moving. 
He then came across a giant crocodile, and the crocodile began to chant. I woke up this morning and I sat on a log. I opened up the menu. The menu said frog. <laughs> and he said, no, no, please let go of me. I can feel myself dying. You're ripping out my insides. I'm never going to find her, am I? There's no God, is there? Fuck! Fuck! The end. The end. So, that's the end of that story. Um, no. Yeah, if you're curious, the moral of that story is irrelevant because we're humans. Why would it apply to us? <laughs>